Hello and welcome to Easy Like a Sunday Morn. I'm your host, Shane Lockwood, and today is the 29th of July, 2014, and this is episode 19 of the show. Thank you for joining me every single week, and thank you for those of you who are listening for the first time. Before I start, I have to apologise for last week's show where I had a a segment called Meme Busters, and I will do another Meme Busters this week. However, last week's show, I didn't do my homework, and I fell afoul of the truth and actually upset a very good friend of mine, Mary, so I want to apologise to Mary. Uh, for any misunderstandings and just upsetting people and and things like that. The meme itself was not a meme. It was the Siberian sinkhole story, which you may have heard all about. I hadn't heard of it before. Now, what had happened was several friends were posting the image, but not the story behind it. So they were just saying it was like part of the uh, Star Wars filming and stuff like that. And um, I didn't know anything about it. My good friend Mary posted the story. I just considered it a meme because I hadn't done any homework and proceeded to go downhill from there. So once again, my apologies. Please forgive me, Mary. Uh, I won't be doing that again. I also have made the mistake of thinking that Mary wasn't listening to the show, and it's, I'm great to have her on. It's, I'm grateful to have her on board. So once I got that out of the way, um, oh, the other thing was it wasn't on Snopes either. I, Snopes dot com is a great website for debunking memes and, and things like that. So I should have done my homework there. I'll just turn off my alarm. Now, um, what else? Oh, now, I will do Meme Busters for, t- for this week. Meme Busters is... Okay, there's a meme going around that was saying that the MH17 uh, Malaysia Airlines flight that was shot down over the Ukraine possibly by Russian rebels, we don't know for sure, I don't know for sure, I'm not going to say who I think did it or whatever, Uh, I'm waiting for more information. Um, Now the conspiracy theory was that that plane was the missing MH370 plane that uh, miss was uh, another one that went missing and they thought was in the uh, Indian Ocean and the conspiracies basically said that what they'd done was they just changed the uh, serial numbers and then destroyed it over the Ukraine and you know that's why it disappeared and all this sort of stuff and you're being lied to and, and whatnot so I think that conspiracy is an incredibly bad taste um, I haven't seen too much debunking it just yet but just be aware that people are actually spreading that uh, and not to get involved with that so that's the end of Miss Busters once again apologies to Mary and I have to move on to some more positive news uh, what's happened lately what's, what could I talk about that's really really positive oh I know I passed my exam the one that I was worried about and uh, Wow, absolutely incredible. I um, I knew that the, the uh, a few people had gotten their results and I had to wait a week for this result. I had my result last week. I knew that I'd um, passed with a credit for one of the subjects, but I had to wait a week for the, uh, the other one. Now, the other one, I actually found out that I got a, a credit as well. So both subjects I got a credit for... And not only that, there was a delay in the marking of the assignments for that subject. And each assignment got a high distinction. Absolutely incredible, true story. Uh, They were group assignments, so that's not all my work. That was other people helping out and contributing to. But there was a few assignments where I had to finish, start, finish, and uh, uh, clean 
clean them myself. Uh, a lot of the the other people in in the group, English was not their first language, so I went through and polished in perfect English, the correct English as well. Uh, their assignments and things like that. So that was awesome. One of the girls got a HD for the total. Um, what do you call it? The total subject. Now she must have aced the exam because she didn't seem to know a whole lot about the subject. But I digress. I know, and the other girl that uh, highlighted the mistakes that I'd made, she'd also missed out on I think one of the questions because she'd ran out of time because the the exam was so long. But so she did really well. She got a C as well, a credit. So I am officially a graduate of UniSA with my associate degree in information technology and the graduation ceremony is in a month uh, less than that it's the 20th of August and a few other friends of mine are graduating on the same day uh, a few the girl one of the girls that the girl that did the exam got the C she's graduating the day before now so that's pretty awesome and Basically, the exam would have brought my grade down a fair bit, I think, from like the potential HD to high distinction to the C. It doesn't matter. I'm just glad that I passed. I was scared that I was only going to get a P2, which is like just the one step up from a fail. Um, but I'm glad that um, I did really, really well. I ran last week's show through a leveller. And I don't know whether you can hear the difference or not. Let me know if you can. Um, yeah. Last week was Avcon, which was is a animation convention, a Japanese uh, audio visual convention um, for Japanese comics, um, animations, you name it. But a lot of people go as other pop culture icons. You know, people dress up as Doctor Who and, and video game characters and all sorts of stuff, right? It's heaps of fun. People play video games. People sell knickknacks and comics and you name it, they do it, right? Now, I didn't bother going last week. One, I had to do the podcast. Two, normally when I go, I film footage and I make a YouTube video and... Um, just highlight what's going on, have a bit of fun, people dress up in characters and, and, and that sort of stuff. But I couldn't really afford to this year. Also, there was another issue where they decided, the management of Avcon decided not to include Daleks uh, as part of the show. So they um, that upset the Dalek Builders Union. But the people that uh, were running... Uh, the people that uh, the Dalek builders did go, but they were dressed as like Doctor Who and uh, characters and stuff like that. It's a shame that the Daleks weren't there. Um, I think that people, because these people, they homemade these Daleks. If you don't know what a Dalek is, you can Google it. It's D-A-L-E-K-S. It's uh, basically, it's an alien inside of a robot machine. Killing machine, basically. They're the bad guys in Doctor Who. Um... So I couldn't afford, really afford to go. Uh, it was a little bit out of my price range, um, and not having you know steady income, it's a bit bit of a pain in the in the backside. I had other bills and things I've got to pay. I got bills to pay this pay, so things are going to be really really tight for the next couple of weeks as well. It doesn't matter. We'll we'll sort something out. Oh, by the way, the, the guys from the, the Nerdist and Scale Lab, I was talking to them about this podcast and, you know, they, they promised the earth and, of course, in the back of my mind, and I said so, I didn't think anything would come of this. And, of course, nothing ever did. Um, so I'm going to do another video, not openly uh, being critical of Scale Lab, but of... Networks in general, I think. Uh, YouTube networks, the people that promise you the earth. But really, what they're doing is they're, they are leeching off your efforts. You work hard, they get paid, and then you get a percentage. 
Now, they might take only 10%, but unless they're actively promoting your YouTube channel, why would you even bother joining a network? And you have to have a CPM. Oh, no, they pay you a higher CPM than the uh, normal AdSense, but unless you're generating a 1,000 views a day, then you're not going to be paid a whole lot anyway. So that's something to bear in mind when you join a network on YouTube. I don't recommend it unless you can get like a fairly decent amount and they can guarantee that uh, they're promoting your videos. So what else is there? Um, oh, this Friday, there is a preview screening of Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm intending to go to that. That's Friday at 1 p.m., and I'll have a review up on either YouTube, and I'll talk about it on the podcast next week, hopefully. And, well, there's no reason why I shouldn't be doing that, so I'll do that. Um, what I did do for Guardians of the Galaxy, I wasn't really familiar with the characters. Now, because they're basically degrade um, heroes, if you if you understand that, and in the terms of the Marvel pantheon, the Marvel characters, uh, and so they are not going to be promoted as much. Now, what they've done is they've pulled out the big guns, they've gone and put a lot of detail into these characters and things like that. So I went and uh, watched a few cartoons and stuff where they had special appearances. Because they knew they were going to do this movie, they've appeared, the characters from Guardians of the Galaxy have appeared in like other mainstream Marvel car- uh, cartoons and things like that. So I did a bit of research. And the two main ones you'll see are Rocket Raccoon, who is basically not from Earth. He's from a planet where the animals can talk but he looks like a raccoon. So he gets offended if you call him a raccoon. And what, what what's happened is he was abducted by aliens. They did experiments on him. He had cybernetic implants, etc., etc. And, um, yeah, so he can walk, talk, shoot a gun, you know, etc., etc. Uh, then you've got another character called Groot, who... Is he looks weird because he's basically a large tree, like a leafless tree that can change its size. He's massive, massively tall. Um, imagine like the Hulk, uh, very d- destructive, but can at, at will fit inside a pot plant. So he can go from a small pot plant sized plant to like a massive seven foot, eight foot tall monster. And the key to him is that the only dialogue he can utter is, I am Groot. But it's the inflections on what he says that conveys the meaning. And uh, that can lead to some quite comic events and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to the movie. I understand the characters a lot more. Now you've got people who are like, Drax the Destroyer is just a guy who's out for revenge because people have killed his family. The main character, Star-Lord, is a guy from Earth who was abducted by aliens as a kid and then like, recruited into a, like an army and stuff. And then you've got uh, other characters that are uh, like adopted daughters of Thanos. And if you're f- familiar with the, the, the comics, you'll understand who Thanos is. Um, he's basically like a big purple guy who I think he had a relationship with Lady Death you know don't quote me on that I'm not familiar with with that end of uh, the Marvel comics but it's something to look forward to speaking of comics and comic book movies they've released the an image of the uh, Wonder Woman costume for the Batman vs Superman movie and I like the costume. It's not as colourful as I was expecting. However, it covers all the bases. And it's got the WW across the, the waist and, and stuff like that. So I think it looks okay. Um, and all right. In 
they've released posters for the Age of Ultron as well. Um, yeah, the Age of Ultron with the Hulk, Thor. It will have Quicksilver and the Hex Witch. The reason that's why I was thinking mention the Hex Witch because I was thinking in terms of female comic book characters that need to be mentioned. What else have I got here in my notes? Oh, for those of you who are interested in absurdist humour, as a few of you are, I've been watching Noel Fielding's Luxury Comedy Season 1. Now, it's not it's fairly old, and the show, paradoxically enough, I've been watching it... Um, yeah, basically the, the second season starts at the end of this month. So there's been a massive delay in the time that's taken to produce uh, the show. Because what's happened is the show is very surreal. Now, have you ever heard of a show called The Mighty Boosh? That's B-O-O-S-H, The Mighty Boosh. It's actually quite funny. And it's got a bit of a cult following to it that was very surreal as well and with luxury comedy it's off the charts in a different way it's very it's surreal in just off the way off the wall comedy most people will like the mighty boosh however i think luxury comedy is one of those things where you either love it or hate it and uh that's the way it is. I don't like the intro music to it. Um, I think Noel Fielding, he reminds me too much of one of my aunts. So, yeah. But the the comedy is is funny. Some of it's quite laugh out loud, loud funny. Some of it's just surreal stuff. It's like, what is going on? This is just weird. So, yeah. The first season you can watch on YouTube. The second season will be available at starting at the end of this month it airs so that's a nice little coincidence for me having just discovered the show i was a fan of the mighty boosh i am a fan of the mighty mighty boosh i've got the the box set another show that uh is in the absurdist category is a show called touch of cloth and for those that don't know touch of cloth is a reference to needing to use the bathroom very like well yeah uh in a rather urgent fashion and um but the show is a send up of a touch of frost and it's got a lot of like send up touch of frost is like a murder mystery show so you've got a detective who you know just, you know, solves murders and uh, weird murders and stuff like that. So this is a send-up of, of those sorts of shows. But it's weird in that there's only two episodes per season. So they've got two seasons. I've only seen the first episode. But it stars the as one of the... Uh, I can't remember her name. I think it's Saran Jones. She played the Doctor's wife... In uh, basically, she plays a character called Idris in an episode of Doctor Who called The Doctor's Wife, and uh, I, I couldn't couldn't quite place her. I didn't know who she was at first. Now I know because I did the research, and um, yeah, uh, it's a great show worth checking out. There's subtle humour in it. Like for example, one of the jokes is the there's an ice cream van that has the words beware of children written on the back of it now most ice cream vans will have beware of children however one of the jokes is that underneath that they've written because they are armed beware of children they are armed i think it's what it says so very absurdist stuff very surreal humor something to check out and something new something that was sort of overlooked by the, the critics and things like that. So, yeah, things to look out for. What else have I been finding out? Apparently, there was a version of Superman, a movie version of Superman, that would have starred 
Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage as Superman. After after the death of Superman, uh, the comic book series, where he takes on a Kryptonian named Doomsday, and none of the other heroes can could help him. They kill kill off Superman, and then is resurrected later. But this version of Superman, played by Nick Cage, he had a mullet, a black mullet, Superman with a mullet. And if you've ever followed the death of Superman, he does get resurrected as four other Superman, and then he comes back and he's got a mullet in the comic books. Wow. And oh, that movie, that version of the movie, was going to be made by Kevin Smith of Mallrats fame. Now, he's got a couple of movies coming up. One is called Tusk, which is basically sort of like a, a version of Misery, you know, like Stephen King's Misery, um, but where uh, this, there's a guy who basically goes up to Canada. He uh, answers an ad, and um, he gets drugged, and this guy wants to turn him into a walrus. Very, very weird, very surreal but it's sort of a suspense, thriller, horror film. And there's another film that he's working on called Yoga Hoses, but I have no idea what that's about. No idea about that. what that's about at all. You'd have to listen to his podcast to find out what was going on there. Um, Yeah, so that's entertainment news. Oh, by the way... When I um, mentioned on Facebook that I graduated, oh, wow, that's a word that, that's a sentence that I had trouble registering. I said it and it didn't register. Now that I've graduated, um, I mentioned it on Facebook and there were over a hundred replies to that. A hundred replies, likes, clicking like, not a hundred replies, but a hundred people clicking like on the fact that I'd graduated and then I published then I printed a an email from the university so it's official and a whole heap of people and a whole heap of people have registered their interest or their congratulations for that as well so that's absolutely fantastic thank you guys um at the beginning of the show, I think I mentioned Kimber. Kimber joined the Facebook group, and the link to the Facebook group will be down below. So that's always awesome. I've been a big fan of Kimber's for a long time. And I'm a big fan of you guys. I've been watching all your YouTube videos. And um, what else? Oh, I'm advertising the fact that I'm going to be doing another the the other channel with the puppets on it and i will do a couple of videos i'm just messing around with uh, different animation styles different voices for the puppet I haven't worked on the part with the voice for the puppet yet um but i will do um just trying to get like the motions right how they move and things like that i've been the the new puppet it was revealed i revealed the name was peabody johnson and yeah, Peabody Johnson, because it's a green puppet, Peabody, body is the colour of the, you know, peas are the colour of green, and so I revealed the, the name of the puppet, and what I've been doing, I've been just playing music, like heavy metal music, like I said, mentioned before, the, uh, the body count, ba- the band's name is Body Count, but their new album's called Manslaughter, and I've been listening to basically that and nothing else. It's worth checking out on iTunes. It's worth like $10. No, it's worth more than $10. It costs $10. It's worth checking out. <laughs> oh, someone's just posted on Facebook a meme. And it says, um, the sign says, check engine. And the photo underneath it is a woman with the bonnet open saying, yep, still there. A little bit sexist, but... It was funny. It could have been a guy looking under the bonnet. Gender's not an issue there for that joke. Doesn't need to be. 
it's just somebody who doesn't know anything about cars. <laughs> oh dear. Lots of funny stuff on Facebook. But uh, I'm up to 25 minutes. And what I've done is pre-recorded, and it took me ages to do, was pre-record the outro section of the podcast. And it'll be a generic thing letting people know the information of like where they can write to me, where they can tweet me, where they can send audio files, how to support the show and so on. That will be at the very end and we'll play um, yeah, we'll play at the end of every show every week. And you can see that I've run out of material. I've been listening to a whole heap of other podcasters and they've been saying, well, when you edit a podcast, you can cut out all the ums and ahs and things like that, which is fine. But this is a weekly podcast and I don't really have the time to edit to that level. And it's not that I don't care about you, the listeners. It's just, it. this is a weekly podcast and I'm doing this by myself. If it was a monthly podcast, I could put a lot more effort into it and uh, stuff like that <laughs> but i'm doing the best that i can once again um and you can tell that i'm starving for material to basically fill out the half hour but what i'll do is i'll leave it here and you can hear the the new exit outro and then i've got to try and figure out how i'm going to place some place the the music through it but uh, this has been a great week i want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening and hearing me dribble oh code word code word the code word for today is social s-o-c-i-a-l social if you could leave that in the comments down below or leave it as a tweet on twitter the uh, information for that is at the tail end. Hopefully you've got a pen and paper handy and you've written down the word social, S-O-C-I-A-L. And when I come up with a code word, I try very hard, well, I didn't today, but I try very hard to make sure that you can actually make puns and jokes and things with the word. And, uh, yeah, it's normally the first word that pops out at me that's lying around on the book. Oh, there's a book called Social Media Marketing, Marketing for Dummies, which I haven't actually read because I was busy with university and stuff, and I'm going to try and focus on and um, read through that, and hopefully that can help me market my podcast. And you can help me market my podcast. Um, what I've got to going to do is in the tail section it does say that if you've got any comments uh, complaints, suggestions feedback, etc there's information how to get your information to me and uh, that's all for today so I hope that you enjoy the, the new outro and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon You've just been listening to Easy Like a Sunday Morn. Thank you for tuning in each and every week. And if you really like the show, please click like on YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, and even iTunes. You can listen to the show pretty much on any format you like. And every rating review helps me to produce this show for free for you every single week. If you had feedback, comments, complaints, questions, suggestions, you can contact me on Twitter, if you have a Twitter account, at S-H-A-I-D-O, that's Shido at Twitter, or you can send sound files and other emails to Shane underscore Lockwood at Hotmail.com, or if you'd like to be on the show and to be interviewed, you can join me on Skype which is how I do my interviews, at 
the Shane Lockwood on Skype. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you again next week. Bye for now.